Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be showing you how I like to paint waves. Let's start with the materials that you'll need. First up, some watercolor paper. I'm using this watercolor block, but if you're painting on a single sheet or in a sketchbook, I'd highly recommend taping the edges of the paper down to minimize warping as much as possible. You'll also need your chosen watercolor paint, brushes in various sizes, and lastly, a more opaque white paint. I'm using gouache. I'm going to start off by making some very light marks with my pencil. You want to create almost mountain range-like shapes. I'm drawing two rows of lines, one to roughly indicate the top edge of the wave, and the second to roughly indicate where the whitest parts of the wave will stop. So for this example, the very top of the paper is sand, then you have the edges of the wave sketched out in the middle, and then the rest of the body of water is at the bottom. Next, using your watercolor paint, begin to paint the lower area of the water section in blues. I like to do a bit of a gradient to make the color of the water a little more interesting. I'm starting out with one corner being a little more on the green slash viridian side, and then adding in more turquoise and other blues across the page. For now, I'm keeping all of the blues underneath the bottom line that I drew, but I'm not worried about being overly careful since it was just a rough indication. Once you're happy with your initial layer of blue, begin to lightly blend the edge of the color up into the wave edge section while the paint is still wet. You want to keep the color pretty light in this area, even fully blending it out so that the uppermost edge of the water has no color to it. I also decided to take a wet brush and lift some of the color out of the bottom section just to add a bit more interesting texture to the water. You're going to want to let this layer of paint dry a bit before adding a second layer, so while you're waiting, it's a great chance to paint a sandy color into the top section. Again, I decided to do a bit of a gradient, blending the color out to be a little lighter as it gets closer to the water's edge. Once that first layer of paint had dried up a little, I decided to go back and add a second layer of color just to build up the saturation and to blend the beach and watercolors together where they met. But after that, I decided to let the paint really dry before moving on. For this next layer of paint, I really wanted to build up the texture in the water, so I started by placing some more intense colors around the lower section. I also continued to lift some of the color out of areas where I felt it needed to be a bit lighter and to help with the transition between the water and the sand. I also decided to use a bit of a wet on wet technique at this stage, where I was placing more color into the areas that were still wet to build up more depth. I also started using a small piece of paper towel to blot even more color out of sections. I continued with adding layers of watercolor to create depth and texture in the water until I was happy with the result. I then let everything completely dry before moving on. Now it's time to start adding the white to the waves. I began by painting along the outer edge of the water with my gouache, slightly modifying the original edge shape as I went along. You essentially want to start with outlining the edges of the waves first. Once you've gone along the edge closest to the sand, continue to add some more prominent jaggedy edges within the water. I'm also varying the thickness of the lines for a more realistic effect. In general, you want the whitest parts of the water to be closer to the sand and gradually blend or fade out. Don't worry if your white gouache starts drying darker, or at least not as pure white as it originally was. We'll be building up the white over time, and the variation in intensity is actually what makes this look so realistic with the least amount of effort. You might find it helpful to look up reference photos of actual waves to give you some idea as to what kinds of shapes start forming in the water. I also found that using the shape of the brush to create almost dotted lines instead of actually dragging the brush along in a line looked amazingly realistic. The other nice thing about using gouache for this is that if you find there's an edge that's a little too harsh or shape that's not quite natural enough, you can easily add more water to the paint already on the page and blend it out. I continued with gradually building up the white areas of the wave, slowly adding more refined lines and detail to the water as I went along. I found that adding more intense white along the edges of thicker, less intense lines gave a very realistic appearance. I also found that the key to creating a realistic looking wave was in keeping the white lines in scale with the rest of the water. I started off with thicker white lines, but I'm slowly building up the intensity of the white using much finer lines and even a smaller brush. Continue with building up your squiggly lines and dots until you're happy with the effect.
you have your finished wave painting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.